Hello everyone and welcome back to Happy Farm Life. My name is Dr. Sierra Richard. I'm a pharmacist dedicated to helping you live a happier, healthier life. And today I'm doing another Pharmacist Get Ready With Me where I answer your questions. And today's question is, should I go to pharmacy school? This is a question I've gotten a lot, especially from high school students or college students that are pre-pharmacy and are curious if they've made the right decision before they actually commit to pharmacy school. So if that is you, I highly recommend watching this video. I'm going to start with giving you some backstory because I have seen a ton of posts and videos about you shouldn't go to pharmacy school, pharmacy is a dying profession, don't do pharmacy. And one thing that I have noticed when I've watched those videos is a lot of them don't go into the backstory as much. And I think that's super important. So I'm going to get ready and just explain the situation. So basically back in the early 2000s, there was a huge boom in pharmacy. So what happened was all of these chain stores started expanding. So you're like Walgreens or CVS and they started increasing the number of pharmacies across the country. These supermarkets started adding pharmacies if they didn't have them. And it was a awesome time to be a pharmacist. So let me tell you, I have heard about sign-on bonuses, people covering student loans, I mean, people getting a new car, moving bonuses to get you in that area. I mean, it was lucrative to be in pharmacy at that point in time. And you were getting, I mean, not unheard of to come out of pharmacy school making 130K. Not out of the question at all. Well, times have changed, and what happened as they saw this increase in the number of um, pharmacy positions being available, the school saw it as an opportunity to increase the number of pharmacists, right? Try to balance out that supply and demand. And so a lot of pharmacy schools opened, a lot of pharmacy schools that were already established increased the number of students that were available per class. And these opening of the schools is probably the most concerning thing because a lot of them were are still having trouble getting accredited to this day. And they also are pushing out students that are not at the same caliber as they had been previously. Again, because they weren't as established and that's a problem. So all these new schools opened up and that supply and demand kind of even down and went the other direction because we opened too many pharmacy schools and that increase in pharmacies didn't continue. So now we have where we're seeing market projections of pharmacy position growth of zero to, I've seen predictions like negative 3% growth in the area of pharmacy. So you're going to be like, oh, so all of those people who told me not to go into pharmacy were correct. Well, there's some things that I wanted to bring up that probably haven't been run up in those videos. So here we go. Should you go to pharmacy school? And I think this is a very personal decision. If you are going to go and you want to go to pharmacy school because you think that you're going to come out of school easy breezy cover girl and get a job that you're making 130 k like not the reality. I have classmates that are still working part-time or PRN because they can't find a full-time position. Yes, part of that is being geographically limited. So if you can't just move wherever for a pharmacist job, but that's not an issue that's particular to the school that I went to. That is across the country. And there are areas that there's high demand, especially rural areas. There's still more of a demand for pharmacists. But as far as a lot of the cities go or places that have pharmacy schools, it is pretty saturated. However, things are changing in pharmacy. Pharmacy is shifting away from a dispensing model and more towards clinical services. The dispensing piece will always be there. We will always need pharmacists to dispense medications, to verify that they are safe, to check medications as they come through, to make sure that they don't interact with anything. There's a lot more to being a pharmacist than putting pills in a bottle. Actually, I can't remember the last time I put a pill in a bottle because that's not my job. That's not what I do. Um, I do work in a hospital, so that's a little different. But the thing that you should know is that pharmacy is changing their model. So these project projections that we're seeing are based on a dispensing model. And there's probably not going to be growth in that because that is not where the market is lying. The market that we are looking towards is doing more vaccinations, providing screenings and health screenings for patients, looking at their medications and helping them manage their therapies, 
you know, are we optimizing your diabetes therapy? Are we on everything that can help you prevent further illnesses from occurring when you have a certain disease state? Um, diabetes, again, is another big example where we can make sure your cholesterol is in check because you have a higher risk of high cholesterol. We're checking to make sure your blood sugars are in check. You know, there's a lot of things that we can do. So we're shifting towards more of that model. So where it was before, where the money was in the retail pharmacy, the jobs were in retail pharmacy, it's more in the clinical pharmacy, which is what I do, which is more hospital or ambulatory care based. And ambulatory care is just essentially a clinic based um, situation. So we're shifting models. And those protections don't include the fact that now, recently, this was just like in the past few weeks, pharmacists are able to administer vaccines to pediatric patients. Federally, they've allowed that. States are still working through like the logistics of that. Not only are they able to get pediatric vaccines, but they recently allowed them to get vaccines for the virus that is currently spreading. Anyway, those things are in the works. And none of the projections include that. The other thing they don't include is if pharmacists are able to get provider status. So provider status is basically where pharmacists could bill during through Medicare Part B for the clinical services they provide. Currently, we're not allowed to do that, which is absolutely insane because there are way less qualified healthcare professionals that are able to do this, such as midwives. Like, no offense to midwives, but I have a doctorate and a year of residency training, and I can't bill for any services that I provide my patients, and they can. Like, that's kind of crazy to me that pharmacists are still fighting this battle, and it's even a question whether or not we're able to provide something that is beneficial to patients. And a lot of places don't provide the services that pharmacists are qualified to do because they can't afford to. You can't just have a pharmacist that you're paying go do these clinical services because you're not getting reimbursed for that. So whether or not we like the fact that healthcare is a business, healthcare is a business. And if you're not making money providing the care that you um, are doing, then businesses aren't going to do it, which is very unfortunate for patients. So that is another thing that pharmacists are working towards. And just the fact that these new vaccine laws have happened at the federal level, we are hoping that that will continue to trend and that pharmacist value is going to be seen a little bit more than it has in the past. So we're still working towards that. But if that passes, that totally changes the landscape of pharmacy and what pharmacy is going to look like, as well as if it's a career you want to go into. For those of you who are having to make this decision now before provider status is decided, Here's my recommendations. If you love the profession, you can still find a place. It is still worth it. If you are wanting this to be an easy breezy job, it is not. I had to work my butt off to get to the job that I really, really wanted. Residency training, if you want to do clinical, is becoming more and more a requirement and less of a recommendation. And that is more, again, in the cities, in rural areas, you can still get a clinical job, but, you know, that's probably going to change in the next few years. So if you're willing to put in that extra year to two years of residency training, it's probably still a good option for you. It comes down to, do you love pharmacy? And is this what you really want to do? If you've never worked in a pharmacy, I highly recommend either working in a pharmacy or shadowing in a pharmacy before you get into it, because it is a very competitive field right now but it's incredibly rewarding. And I love being a pharmacist, but you have to be ready to work your butt off if you want to be in pharmacy now and get a job out of school that is good and that you love. So that is my thoughts. I'm going to finish getting ready. Thank you all for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and let me know if you have any other questions down below or anything else that you would like me to address that I didn't in this video. Cause again, this is a short, like getting ready video, but if you have other questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.